Well, as a last ditch effort for the Bluick, my dad finally decided to come out here. So he actually drove to his son's house. This is like a big event because he doesn't go anywhere. It's a big event. He put like a whole, oh, you know, 15 miles out here or so, 15, 20 miles. So uh, put a whole that much on his car, on old Clanky, no less. Anywho, um, you can see there's a mark on one of the plug wires that is for cylinder number one. And we marked that just so we know this is cylinder one right over here. Uh, long and short of it is we kind of looked at everything, eyeballed everything, everything looked good, took the cap and rotor off, and uh, we checked something from an Eric the Car Guy video. Basically what you do is you take the cap off and then you crank the engine over with a wrench until the rotor points to cylinder number one. So we did that and I don't think you'll be able to see. Uh, no, I think the sun is coming in, but let me see if I could zoom so the camera readjusts. See that white dot right there? That is the zero mark on the scale. I know it's out of focus, but I can't really get you a better shot. That's a zero mark on the scale for the timing. So we rolled the engine over until it hit the zero mark, okay, which I don't know if you can even see it any better. Maybe I was showing you the wrong white dot, but anyway, it's right in that general area. I can't even see what the camera's seeing, there's too much sun on it. Anywho, we rolled everything over until the mark on the crankshaft pulley was right up to the zero mark and the rotor was pointing to number one. And then what Eric did was he would start cranking the engine counterclockwise, backwards, and see how long it takes for the rotor to start turning. And it was, we were a good about 17 degrees out. I don't know if that's exactly a valid test because I think there would be slack even in a brand new chain but Eric did that, Eric the car guy did that, and uh, he found on his, uh, I think his Fairmont or something, that uh, his timing chain was quite worn. But like I said, this went 17 degrees before the rotor even started to move. Um, but that's really to be expected. It otherwise seems to run right. So the next thing we did is we checked the, we eyeballed the points, we didn't remove them and there was nothing to see. In fact, we cranked the engine over with a wrench. Uh, we actually used the alternator to do that because the bolts right here was just a lot easier that way. Um, so we cranked that over and we didn't see the points open and close, which is a little odd, but the engine does run. Um, we, hooked the, we hooked the tachometer up to it. It said to hook to the positive of the coil, which is here, and engine ground. So we went to the bolt on the alternator here, and that gave a very false reading. When I hooked it up to the negative on the coil, then we got a real RPM reading that went up and down with the engine. Otherwise, it was just sitting a little bit off the zero mark and not really reading anything, even if you revved it. But um, we set the idle, we looked it up, and the idle was supposed to be 600 automatic transmission with air conditioning and that is what this is because there's the air conditioning and obviously it's automatic so we did that and um, it still ran kind of not too well so we bumped it to 700 which made it considerably happier um, as a last ditch effort we took the fuel line off which you see there and read about a trick where you blow compressed air into that line backwards toward the gas tank. You take the gas cap off and blow it out because there's like a filter sock in the tank and that can be clogged up with stuff. So we blew compressed air through there. Um, obviously, none of that made any difference. 
one other thing that we did, and I don't know if you can see it. Uh, where is it? Okay, there it is. It's under the carbonator. That red thing right there is a vacuum hose on there. Had a very weak connection. And the other end of that vacuum hose goes over to this side. This is the hose right here. Not the fat one that goes to the brake booster, the one above it. That runs over the brake booster and in here to this thing here, which I don't know if the camera can make out. There it is. No clue what that is. My dad said maybe it's a vacuum accumulator. But one hose goes into that. That also had a really shoddy connection that was worn out. So we clipped that off and reconnected it. And it has a hose that comes out of that and runs up in this mess here. And if you see like those yellowish looking hoses there, it goes to one of those, which is for heater control. In fact, I forget which one it was, but I think those two hoses actually run up here and one goes out to that diaphragm there and the other goes into the blue hose to the heater valve on the engine. So that was potentially a good source of a vacuum leak. Um, didn't seem to make much difference there either, but it was a good source for engine vacuum. I haven't hooked a vacuum gauge up to this engine and we did that today for the first time. Uh, I don't have the gauge handy, but basically on the scale there, you should be reading about 20. We were reading about 18. So it was just on the cusp of the green zone. And that indicated late ignition timing, but the timing we checked with the timing light, which was another thing we did. And I think we found we were about only two degrees off from what it should be. So that's a good thing, but the best news of all was that that vacuum gauge, when it got up to its 18 or so, wherever it ended up sitting, was fucking rock solid. It just stayed there. My old Chevy, my old 81 Chevy, the needle would go like this. You know, whatever it would, whatever it would read, it was always chattering around and moving around and doing shit, which indicates bad valves and all kinds of, you know, all kinds of really bad news shit, but that car fucking ran and took us everywhere. Well, anyways, uh, nothing that we ended up doing made any difference, unfortunately, so that was the last ditch effort for the Buick before she goes into the hospital. So, I don't think that's happening tomorrow, which doesn't make a difference to you because you're not going to get the videos in the right order anyway. Um, that was really it. We just kind of farted around and trouble, dis trouble didn't disappear. So, oh well. Such is. Uh, the engine seemed to run better after we reset the idle like that. And I had it running pretty much close to that. Um, I did take it around the block three times, as a matter of fact, and it drove perfectly fine. It drove absolutely perfectly fine. But on the last go around the block, I stopped back here and said to my dad, I'm going to go around again and I'm going to be a minute or so because I want to sit with it in gear and see if it starts mis misfiring. And sure enough, it did. So nothing we did, which really wasn't much to speak of, solved any problem. However, we did see good news on the vacuum gauge. That's actually excellent to see instead of the engine being all worn out. Uh, I'd like to leave you there and say that uh, hopefully sometime during this week it's going to go into the hospital. But of course, that's not the end of the story. I will have to change my location in order to tell you that part. So let me do that now. Okay, I have to change locations, obviously, so somebody wouldn't hear me. Oh yeah, you know what's coming next. So we're out there, and we're farting around for, oh, maybe 20 minutes, half hour, before even starting it up. And finally, it was time to hook the timing light up. We hooked the uh, 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 tachometer up and, and the vacuum gauge, so we had all that shit hooked up. No, we didn't check the dwell 
on the points uh, probably because of what's next so we're out there the engines running we're reading the timing uh, you know on the scale there what do you think that says um, that looks like about uh, you know four to me I don't know what does it look to you he says yeah about four blah 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 oh, lion came by Did you say hello anyways Mr. fucking Chitalian comes outside and says, what are you doing running a car? I told you several times you can't run your car outside. Are you fucking for real? My fucking father is here. I said, hang on a second. This is my father. He's helping me with the Buick. I told you to turn the car around. Why don't you turn the car around? I said, do you know how much fucking traffic is on this block? You live here too. Don't you know how much traffic is here? How the fuck am I going to back this car out at the angle that I have to back out from where it's parked? How the fuck am I going to back this car out into traffic? That's why I back it in when everything is clear. So that way, when I go to pull out, I just look both ways. Everything's good. Left, right, left again. We're clear. And I go. That's it. Well, he don't even fucking look, number one. He just pulls the fuck out. There have been at least four near accidents this year with him. Because he just pulls the fuck out of his driveway. Or when he goes to back in, there's somebody like down the block behind him. And he just says, oh, fuck me. You know, oh, not waiting for you. Fuck you. You know, so he just goes and he backs in his driveway. That's okay. He says, why don't you turn the car around? I would do it for you. Oh, you would? Oh, that's real nice of you. How about you close your fucking windows? And he's like, he looked at me and he's like, shit, I didn't think he was going to say that. And then, of course, he had a pure Italian answer for that. I've been running my air conditioner for three fucking months now. The weather, you know, it's been hot. And, uh, and uh, this is the first time I got to open the windows. I said, you had them closed earlier today. And he looked at me like I had fucking six heads. I said, overnight, you had them closed. I was out early in the morning. Your windows were closed. There's no reason you can't close your windows. I'm not closing my windows. So basically, I have to bow down to his shit, and he won't even close his fucking windows. How long were we out there with the car running? 15, 20 minutes? Reading the timing, looking at the vacuum gauge, rev it up, see what the fuck it's doing. And this motherfucker has to fucking complain. He says, oh, last time my wife talked to you, and uh, you made her very upset. Well, bullshit, because we ended everything amicably. And finally, I gave him the one-two punch at the end, and it bounced right the fuck off of him. I could not fucking believe this. I said, oh, you got a problem with the car running? Well, I'll tell you what, you're in luck. Because starting in October, I made all of this up, of course. Starting in October, I got in myself a new job. And I have to be there at 7 a.m. And this car is going to be my daily driver. So you're going to hear it at 6 a.m. every day. Oh, that's fine. What? It just bounced off of him. I couldn't fucking believe that. So the motherfucker's like, you don't have a carbon monoxide detector on this car. Or, what is that, a carbon, uh, wah, 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 Sounds exactly like Joe. Hmm, like father, like son. Carbon monoxide, uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of let it convert it. That's what I meant. Right, good. Yeah, you don't have that, so it smells like gas. If this were a regular car, and please believe me, let me tell you, let me tell you, you know, the hand comes out. Catch the fucking spit, the Italian spit, when they talk, so the hand goes. They talk with their hands to try to catch the spit as it comes out. So he's, he's like, if this were a regular car, I wouldn't care. Yes, you would. Yes, you would. I'd turn my car around for you. Well, why don't you just close your windows? Well, anyway, my dad, of course, is standing here in the middle of this shit. And as, as the conversation got a little bit more heated, nobody was yelling. I was getting to the point where I was going to yell. So this is like my catharsis after, so that's, that's why I'm going apeshit. Anyways, 
my father just went back to the car and he's reading the timing and looking at the vacuum gauge and then he ends up shutting it off and then he finally steps in and he says to the Chitalian, listen, I'm sorry, we got carried away here, we're checking a bunch of things, it's off now, he shut it off, it's off now, message received, and blah, 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 blah. If he ever says anything else to me, I am going to start yelling immediately. If he steps on my property, and he did, and I was this close, I said, I'm going to have to, add, I said, at this point, I'm going to have to, and he cut me off and said something, but I was going to say, I'm going to have to ask you to step off of my property. That look should tell you something. Anyway, I'm about out of steam with that. So if this motherfucker causes more shit, oh, we're going to start breaking cameras out and start recording and let him get pissed off about that. And, you know, let him hit me. I want to see him hit me. Because he's probably got the fucking temper to do it. He knows better not to. But if you get him just riled up enough, let him fucking hit me and go to jail. I hope he fucking rots in hell. And I hope you fucking watch this, you goddamn Chitalian. Fucking asshole. And, of course, he's outside all day. His his shit, not, it's not a shed. It's a fucking barn. That fucking monstrosity that he built. That's ugly as sin. He's had the doors of that open all day, banging, making noise. This is all fine. This is all fine. I can't say anything about that, but God forbid I fucking run the Buick. I said, I can't turn the car around because it's fucking not running right. It'll stall in the middle of the street. Close your windows. I can't close my windows. Nope. So I hope the wife says something to me. So you made my husband very upset. Well, you're going to get upset now because I'm going to start yelling right away. And I'm perfectly within my right to start yelling as well. Oh, my blood is fucking boiling. That motherfucker. I hope he goddamn dies. Not slow. Soon. Thanks for watching. Make sure you click like. Make sure you click subscribe. And I will keep you updated with what goes on with the Bluick later on after she's out of the hospital. Take care now. Oh, and by the way, look whose windows are closed now.